Yeah. And speaking of making money off of stuff that uh, that we like to attack, let's talk a little bit about the Rings of Power and oh, how yeah. because of the writer's strike, no writers and producers are going to be on the set for the remainder of season <laughs> two's filming. Oh. So this is from Variety. Uh, basically, the writer's strike has uh, thrown a monkey wrench into um, stuff that's already in production. And as if the Rings of Power wasn't bad enough with the writers and producers, now the writers and producers aren't going to be involved in the show as it finishes filming uh, their season two. And uh, I, I just found this funny because I was like, you know what? This might actually improve the series uh, going forward. Uh, Brian from the Popcast, what's your take on this? Does, uh, does the Rings of Power really need writers and, and producers to, uh, to move forward? <laughs> No. In fact, I would argue that if you just, you know what? Amazon, be brave and just <laughs> use chat GPT and call it like some kind of, you know, it a new industry standard. <laughs> it's testing untainted, the limits untainted. of our science. <laughs> bet you, bet you the show would be better. Tom? I bet you it would. Right. I bet chat GPT can, can create a better script. Than what we Conspiracy got Tom, season. what's your take on this? Okay, apparently I'm the only one that kind of enjoyed it. Oh my god. <laughs> other than other than some odd casting, get, get rid of them. Other than some odd casting, I kind of want to see where it's going. Ugh. Nobody else? <laughs> no. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at these faces. I, yeah, no. yeah. I, I actually look, I like almost anything with a sword in it i i it's just i don't know it's just one of those things if, if it's conan or he-man related i'm usually i mean I, i'll probably watch it eventually um so i i didn't really hate it other than some weird casting which is a pretty normal thing these days that you're gonna get weird casting right you're gonna get shoehorn casting and no one's gonna understand why exactly and, and you're gonna have some weird stuff but the overall story remove some of the weird i i actually like where it's going i i, I want to see the second season I'm, I'm actually kind of interested and i watched that south park episode that chat gpt uh, wrote and uh it was pretty good it was pretty it much on par <laughs> it wasn't bad it wasn't, it wasn't bad, bad. <laughs> all right so uh, i want to i want to throw this to tom connors and get his take on not only the writer's strike but how it's going to affect the rings of power season two and then uh, i know tom has to bow out because he's got other responsibilities but uh tom What's your take on this? Um, like, uh, as far as Rings of Power goes, it'll probably be better. Um, it'll be better. <laughs> of course, it'll be better because uh, you don't have writers dragging it down. Like, they could probably make a better show just going out there and playing pretend like kids. Uh, let's yeah. be real. Uh, as far as the writer strike goes, it's a very complicated and nuanced uh, situation. Uh, we're at a point now where hopefully this flushes out some of the crappy, untalented hacks and uh, Hollywood gets itself back to where it needs to be. Uh, writers need to live up to this expectation that they're trying to give themselves right now as well. It's like, I want to support the writers, but they haven't exactly given us a lot to to enjoy over the last few years. But I also understand part of that's propaganda and crap coming from above and they have to here i know a lot of writers who are like i don't like writing this crap but if i don't then i don't eat mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's one of those things uh and again the these strikes the only people they really hurt are the people that are you know not these big no-name people the big no-name people you see in the in the in the all the articles for the strike and stuff like that like the adam who ruins everything guy these people can afford not to work for five six seven months or more it's the it's the other folks who can't Right. And there's a lot of shows that are going to get canceled because of this. There's a lot of movies that are going to get canceled because of this. Some that's probably for the better. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to lie right now. There's only a few show, like literally a handful of shows I give a crap about. And I could name them real quick. South Park, Yellowstone, Cobra Kai, Beavis and Butthead. That's really about it that I can think of offhand. <laughs> like, otherwise, I don't care. Like everything else can go away at this point because it's all crap. Uh, and right. I'm really uh, not sure how long it's going to take to uh, resolve these issues. Some of the things I agree with, some of them I think they're expecting too much, but Hollywood doesn't seem like they want to budge on a lot of these things. So we'll see. All right, Tom, thank you for uh, joining our panel. Uh, where can people find more of you going uh, forward? You this can find week? me in Midnight's Edge, Midnight's Edge After Dark, and I'm always in the regular spots. So 
All right. And thanks uh, for turning on your on webcam uh, today. I did a few times. I'll try to work <laughs> on it some more. I'm telling you, just use the puppet next time, Tom. It was amazing. I might. I might. <laughs> All right. All right thanks, thank Tom. you guys. Appreciate it. Take care. All right. Matt Vader 74. You know, what's yeah. interesting is that previously, when there was a Hollywood writer's strike, you saw kind of like a pivot to more like reality TV shows and stuff like that. But this time oh. around, people have YouTube and, and creator content and, and basically people like us. And we're already seeing kind of like a movement away from like streaming and, and Hollywood stuff to more kind of comic skate style independent creator things. Do you think that uh, that this uh, writer's strike could be a mistake and allow, you know, uh, more market share to go towards independent creators? Well, I know... Uh the whole reality based TV thing has been like the death knell for actual television. It's, it's been awful. And I think that kind of stemmed from the last writer's strike in some ways. Right. Kind of like what you just said. Um, I don't watch network television anymore. I don't, uh, I, I told my wife the other day to turn the cable off and, and, and if she does, I, I wouldn't care Just keep the internet on all. Most of our stuff that we watch is at a theater or on some of the big streaming platforms. Um, and yes, I, I think people, I, th I think the way people consume their entertainment has changed. There's places like YouTube, there's Rumble, there's, you know, uh, Twitch, uh, you know, Don't kick, TikTok, tic TikTok oh. Instagram, whatever, you know, I mean, I, I can't stand TikTok. I think it's awful. I think it makes you stupid the longer you keep watching the thing, but, but, um, at the same time, um, the way people get their entertainment is changing, and the, the Hollywood and the network system and stuff is is broken. Y you know, everybody's talking about, oh, we can't, we're, we're the the late night television guys aren't able to do their shows. They're going to go to repeats and SNL. Well, those shows haven't been good in years, right? I mean, who cares? Nobody gives a shit if if those shows aren't going to be on television. Um, I spend my evenings when when I'm not. When, when the time that I have to watch late night entertainment, I'm watching Ethan selling comic books with his 10 friends over there, you, you know, or, 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 or something Thanks like that. Watching. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's, that's, I'm, I'm not saying I'm always watching like real, but it's on, it's on in the background, you, you know, Tom, the, Mid the Mid most, <laughs> the most incredible thing just happened. And this is why I love YouTube so much, Matthew and Matt and Brian and conspiracy mm -hmm. Tom. I love it because uh, I've been saying all along, I said, this is what happened. I voted for President Trump. I celebrated and you mm -hmm. guys lost your minds and you destroyed my life. You, this this artist, Chris Cross, uh, who, he's not that Chris. He's not the he's not the jump, jump guy. He's a yeah. kid. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. other stuff. Yeah. He's been telling me all uh, weekend that I'm wrong about that, that. I got fired for being an a-hole, which is possible, mm -hmm. except explain all the other a-holes that are still working there. Uh, and he just mm -hmm. tweeted something out, which was incredible. Matthew, can I share this on your show or should I yes. save it for mine? Uh, this you can is, share it on here. This is unbelievable. Look Breaking at this. news. Yeah, look at this uh, situation here. Uh, let me see here. All right there. Okay. Uh, this is why he says, uh, you and your antics, let's call a buck a buck. LL Cool J said it best. Ego is not your amigo. Humility is your superpower. Annoying people being braggadocious with your political leanings with someone like Trump is like me being Christian telling people they're going to hell. Every chance I get. Eventually, it's so divisive that it blows back to the company you're working with, and they get complaints that of people you annoyed. In other words, my peers, money-paying people. You know how corporations hate that. You're not a dumb man. Whether you are late or not, doesn't matter. They're, SJWs are gaslighting and saying the reason I was blacklisted because I was late all the time, which I wasn't. Uh, so he's admitting here that had nothing to do with it. You say you love DC, but you embroiled them in your activities which was me being excited about Trump by proxy. <laughs> they don't like that. So you can pretend that you don't know why it happened. Uh, it didn't happen out of nowhere. I said, you just said what happened. I was excited for Trump's presidency. My peers literally told me my vote would lead to the death of queer creators. It was insane. Obama won and it was a nonstop party. Trump won and the people who voted for him were called a-holes and fired. This is yes. astonishing. Thank you, Chris Cross. DC and Marvel's creator explains why I was blacklisted from uh, from comics. 
I was happy about Trump's victory. That quote unquote annoyed people. Thank you for the confirmation. Yeah. Unbelievable. Thank That's you. That's real. That's real. It, but it's like the way you describe it. Like, don't you understand? You annoyed people with being braggadocious about it. And that blew back on the company. Who blew it back on the company, you jerk? You guys did. You're the ones who said we won't work with him anymore because he's excited about Trump. Yep. Unreal. Yeah, the, the people who most preach compassion and inclusivity are the most exclusive and uh, bigoted people out there, uh, ironically enough. Hey, guys. If you could do me a quick favor, if you like this episode and it tickles your fancy or any other episode that we've done in the past, uh, share it on social media and tag us in that post so that we know you're talking about us. And we will immediately jump onto that app and we will respond to your tag. And uh, we can talk about what you like about the episode and possibly talk about something that we might want to cover in the future. And we would love to bring you in in our community. We have a wonderful Discord app as well. There's a bunch of people in there that just love chatting with us. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. So if you like this podcast, tag us in that post and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you guys so much. Back to the podcast. Uh, Ethan, what do you think of this writer strike and how it might affect uh, um, not only independent content creators, but uh, something as big as the billion dollar Rings of Power series? Well, I hope all of them uh, fall apart. I hope they all fall into a hole or, or volcano. If they, if like all of these people in Hollywood um, fell into an active volcano at once, I think the world would be a better place and children would be safer. Uh, earlier, uh, Brian talked about how, uh, you know, the fingerprints of James Gunn being on the DCU would be a good thing. And as long as they're not on children, I agree with him. I think it would be better that uh, his fingerprints stay on the DCEU. Uh, so the writer's strike isn't going to affect anyone in any meaningful way. Who cares? Is it going to affect us? No. I don't work for, uh, you know, I'm, I don't belong to the Writers Guild. Mm -hmm. I'm not in WAG or whatever that is. Uh, and I'm going to continue to create. I'm not in some big uh, socialist union. I'm independent, an independent creator, mom and pop comic book company. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I, uh, I'm so glad the accolade is paused. Blade is paused. All this stuff is great. It's, it's just good news, man. Uh, these guys should yeah. slow down anyway. It's uh, going to so, throw Hollywood for a, a curveball, that's for sure. Tom, uh, you had a take you wanted to share? Yeah, it was going off what Ethan was saying. Um, so so there was a, a, like a Hogwarts video game that came out recently. I think we're all familiar with the Hogwarts video game, right? So I was going to buy it. Like I was, I, was on, I was on my PlayStation, and I'm, I'm going to download it. And then I said to myself, you know what? Let me go check the reviews. Um, if anybody wants to have like an experience, go ahead and Google – uh, Hogwarts, whatever the game is, reviews. They're, they're going to give you three top reviews, right? One of them is from Wired Magazine. So one review is 10 out of 10. One review is 9 out of 10. Wired Magazine, one out of 10. So I clicked on it to, to read their review. It was a seven-page rant about how J.K. Rawlings is a bigot and how her hand is in everything and the, the whole game is anti-Semitic. And it's, it, was, it was literally a seven-page rant uh, go and, and that was Wired Magazine's official review of a highly rated video game, all because the person reviewing uh, was a was a they them from Portland, which they mentioned many times throughout, um, and 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 is a, a a fosters a rabbit by the way, so she's a rabbit uh, rescuer. Uh, but the whole article, seven pages long, that, that that Wired Magazine then went and said, "This is our official review of a game." Terrifying stuff. Terrifying stuff. Indeed. Um, what's also terrifying is that we're at almost 300 concurrent viewers on this stream. That is uh, amazing. Uh, if you're awesome. out there and you, and you like uh, what you're okay. hearing, give us a thumbs up, uh, like the video that helps us out with the algorithm. And another thing that helps us out with the algorithm is No Money G, who just uh, donated $20. Great show, guys. By the way, I now identify as a transitioning they, them, trans female, but still transitioning to the male. I always was by drinking my blood, Bud Light. Welcome, uh, no, which, welcome, which no is, Money G. Welcome. Yes, which is <laughs> Vader's favorite beer. No Money G was out here for the Vegas uh, meetup. Uh, he went to our, our special screening of Free Enterprise and Attack of the Dock. It's great to meet you out here, No Money G. Thank you so much for the support. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, guys, guys, there was this thing on Twitter t um, the other day where they were talking about uh, how if women ruled the world, there would be no war. Oh, I and saw this. Yeah. I, I responded to that tweet by saying, uh, well, there's certainly no 
Star Wars anymore. And then I put a gif of uh, of Kathleen Kennedy because she has effectively ended Star Wars. But um, one of the funny things about uh, this take is that she's now talking about how they're going to switch up Star Wars's um, uh, release strategy to mimic James Bond, where that's like, okay, instead of one Star Wars movie every year, we're going to move it to once every three years, and we're going to really take the time to plan it out and all that stuff. And um, I, I call BS on this because basically, for those of you who don't know, the, the uh, James Bond release schedule is completely arbitrary because those productions are always a mess um and uh and i just find it funny how like kathleen kennedy is literally trying to gaslight uh everyone about her tenure uh, overseeing star wars and uh and the process by which they go about making these movies so brian from the popcast i want to start with you what's your take on this do you think that the extended release schedule for star wars is going to help or are we just doomed un until Kathleen Kennedy gets replaced? Well, it'll, it'll help them um, because I, I do believe that <clears throat> in addition to uh, the low quality efforts that Star Wars have been putting out there, because it's pretty bad. It's all pretty bad. Um, also, there's a fatigue. Like, so like if you continually create crap and you do it at a breakneck pace, um, there's this sort of apathy that the normies will adopt when every time, every time they see like a Star Wars project, they just go, whatever, I don't need to worry about it right now because you're getting so much so quickly and it's so bad. Now, if it was really good, then that would be better. But I believe that you can't, I don't think you can have quality and speed. And there, there's a reason why it's just been so bad, you know, um, so I think that a slow release will be better, good for them. More people will forget that the last thing they watched was super bad, and they might check out the next thing. So Matt Vader 74, Conspiracy Tom famously broke you when it comes to your love of Star Wars. Uh, what's your what's your take on it? Can, can anything be done to salvage this franchise? I, I don't know if there really is anymore at this point. I'm kind of just to the point of, of non-caring about Star Wars going forward. I have no no thrill or sense of uh, anticipation for anything that's coming out. I mean, not even the Ahsoka stuff. And I kind of like the whole rebel show. Um, yeah. Um, it is what it is, man. Um, they release it. We'll watch it. And if it sucks, we'll say it. If it's doesn't suck, I guess we'll say that too. But um, yeah, Tom broke me. Tom broke me a long time ago and, and that's okay. I it's, 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 it's fine. I'm not even mad about it anymore. Um, Star Wars sucks. Kathleen Kennedy sucks. Um, I hate, <laughs> I, I hate their agenda and, um, yeah, man, I, it is what it is. It's, you know, the force is a female right now. We can't deny that because it's all about the women in Star Wars and, eh. and, and so, I wouldn't uh, even really care a whole lot about that if it was actually any good and worth watching, but it's not, it's, it's terrible. It sucks. So. so conspiracy, Tom, you, you had a, a famous metaphor that you shared with us about how, you know, everyone loves empire strikes back. So like if you went to a restaurant and you, you ordered your favorite thing on that menu, AKA the empire strikes back, and you just kept going there every day, ordering the same thing on the menu. But then like, if you ever ordered something different, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. Is it still your favorite restaurant or is it just that that one dish I know, is right? your favorite thing? So legitimately, like, like okay, we're all familiar with Carabas, the, the, the Italian restaurant. I think we've, we've probably all been there at least once. Uh, they have a dish called Chicken Brian. It is one of my favorite things in the whole world. Does that mean that that is like the best restaurant in the whole world? Or does that just mean I like goat cheese and sun-dried tomatoes? Uh, I, I think it's just I like <laughs> goat cheese and sun dried tomatoes, but yeah, no, we, we, if, I, I'm sorry, Vader. Um, it's okay, man. If, if, I don't, if, I don't if even you, know why you brought this up. You, you know, because <laughs> every time you see my face, I haunt your dreams, brother. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm past it. I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good, man. I don't care anymore. I mean, look, there's a lot of analogies. Really, I, I only like Empire and Rogue One. The, and well, no, uh, the Sith, the third, the third prequel was good. And the the first sequel was good, but Star Wars is just a mess, man. No, I, th no th th there's nothing th th there's there's no hope. Um, but here's an idea. Here's an idea. Um, we're all creatives, 
Uh, we we all have great ideas, and we've played this game before. Uh, why don't we make a Star Wars movie, and we can crowdfund it and put it out there, and just see if our thirty minute movie uh, just holds a candle to just they would uh, take it down. You think we'd, so? We'd, what, we'd, what, we'd go th- we'd go through all that work and effort and time and money, and they would. Google yeah. or whatever would just strike it out, and we'd be. Are you guys nope. remembering? Then um, I think it was Mike Zero or someone made like this whole like a it was Star Wars to, theory. Like, Star Wars what theory. It, what was it? Star Wars theory, theory made a fan. Yeah, uh, Mike Zero. Uh, don't say his name. <laughs> it was. I forgot what it was. It was gorgeous though. Not making any money. It didn't break any copyright rules. It was manually struck. He even had permission from. Lucas yeah, Stone yeah. He, was, he had yeah. permission. So all yeah. that, and it was still manly struck. Any 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 money he made from that, the ad revenue was completely gone. Yeah, Re- really quick before we get to Ethan's take on this, I just want to remind everyone that we're going to be doing the the drawing for the free Cyber Frog signed copy. Uh, so your last chance to uh, get in on the giveaway, ha- type in hashtag Cyber Frog in the all chat. All lowercase, right? Yeah, all lowercase all if you guys want to uh, be entered for that. Uh, Ethan, you know, we talked a little bit uh, earlier about how like, you know, women, when put in charge of, of certain industries, are just the wrong fit. And I, I don't think that that's ever been more clear with anyone other than Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, ever since she was passed the torch by George Lucas, she has systematically run Star Wars, the brand, and the franchise into the ground. What's your take on her new strategy? Well, I mean, I, I don't think she's going anywhere. Sorry, I think she's here to stay. Uh, I think she's shown, she has a, had a record of... Uh, enormous financial successes aside from solo uh that really you know a a non-creative corporation is going to look at dispassionately and just believe that she deserves to stay there Uh, what do i think of it i don't know i you know to me it's like um anything that isn't george lucas is fanfic to me does that make sense Yep. I don't, you know, it could be good fanfic. It could be bad, uh, bad fanfic. It probably is going to be bad fanfic. Um, but um, I, I kind of arrived at that conclusion where I really want the original creators to uh, to do, um, to follow through. No, Anybody else is a pretender. The The new Lord of the Rings show is shit because it's not, it's not Tolkien. So, you know, uh, it's it can't possibly be good. Right. Uh, I mean, it could, well, it could be, it could be, but it isn't real. It isn't authentic. It, it might be good fan fiction. So I would say, you know, like rather than, even if we could do that, like rather than borrow somebody else's ideas, uh, somebody else's characters, create your own guys. Yeah. And that way you don't have copyright issues. If you want to tell the greatest Star Wars story ever, make something kind of close to it uh, and do it and own it. You know, and and make something that could become the next Star Wars. Yep. Um, that's what I would say, and I, I hope everybody kind of steers in that direction. You can't be fans forever. Right now, you have fans uh, who think they're special. They're they're especially amazing fans who are making Star Wars right now and looking down at fans with like you with contempt because you're lesser fans. Uh, they're they're employed fans of Star Wars. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't. It, all of it's meaningless. My, my hope is that that my initial hope is that Disney would be a a, a kind company that that um, uh, took entertaining children into consideration, took that as a you know an, an important thing, and they're not. Uh, they they uh, canceled viciously canceled Gina Carano, which is unforgivable. Uh, they agreed. Um, yeah. I can't I can't support them. They uh you know parents decided that they wanted to make a law uh, that teachers in public elementary schools shouldn't be allowed to discuss confusing gender issues with children between the ages of four and eight. Uh, and Disney opposed that law. Uh, I, I can't, this is a, a dangerous, sick company. It is not Walt Disney's company anymore. Nope. It's just, it has his name. Star Wars is not Star Wars. It just has the name Star Wars. And um, proceed with that in mind, guys. Stop getting your heart broken over this stuff. Flip it off, move on, and let's do something new. Hey, guys, if you like this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and comment below on your favorite video as well. That goes a long way with helping us boost our channel and get out there in front of more people. And it lets uh, YouTube know that we're doing something right. And if you want to catch us live, we go live two times a week, once on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time and on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So join us there in the chat. We will see you on the live stream. Stay salty.